Well, thank you for tuning in to listen to this special address from NVIDIA on quantum computing. I'm Tim Costa, the director of HPC and quantum computing product at NVIDIA. And today I'm gonna to talk about defining the quantum accelerated supercomputing platform. Since this is a quantum computing address, some listeners may not be familiar with the breadth and the depth of the NVIDIA accelerated computing platform. So I wanna start with a brief introduction. Our invention of the GPU in 1999 sparked the growth of the PC gaming market, redefined computer graphics, and ignited the era of modern AI. Today, NVIDIA is a full stack computing company, delivering CPUs, DPUs, GPUs, and software that fuel data center scale computing solutions. We start with amazing chips, but for each field of science, industry, and application, we create a full stack. As we build into a talk about quantum accelerated supercomputing, it's worth taking a moment to consider the workloads of the modern supercomputer. At NVIDIA, we see five main pillars of modern supercomputing. Simulation remains the foundation of HPC. Over 20 years ago, computer scientists and researchers started using GPUs to accelerate a range of scientific applications. With the release of CUDA, NVIDIA ushered in a revolution of developer accessibility to the disruptive performance possible with GPU accelerated supercomputing. Today, we have over 2,700 GPU accelerated applications and counting. More recently, HPC plus AI has been gaining considerable steam, exploding from fewer than 100 related research papers on archive five years ago to near 5,000 papers last year. A third workload is the scientific edge. Bringing AI supercomputing to the scientific edge will turn data collection instruments into real-time interactive research accelerators. Fourth, digital twins. Digital twins use inputs from simulation, AI surrogate models, and observed data from the edge to create real-time digital twins that revolutionize industrial and scientific HPC. And finally, we have quantum computing, which we'll dig into for the rest of this address. The modern supercomputer will leverage all these technologies to solve the grand challenges of the 21st century. And now let's focus in on quantum computing for the remainder of this address. The progress made by the quantum computing industry over the last decade has been truly impressive. We've gone from working on one or two qubit systems, mostly within academia, to systems with up to one or 200 qubits available to users through the cloud. However, there's a long ways to go. The community generally agrees that the promise of quantum accelerated computing, that is, applications accelerated by the addition of quantum computing resources, will come in the era of fault-tolerant quantum computing consisting of millions of physical qubits, error-corrected to thousands of logical qubits. Alongside the question of the hardware, there's serious work to do in developing the software, identifying the unknown algorithms, and building the developer and application base that will ultimately be necessary to realize value in quantum accelerated computing as the hardware matures. To meet that challenge and prepare for the quantum accelerated future, governments, institutes for higher education and research, as well as industry are investing heavily across the board in hardware, software, and algorithm development. Worldwide, we can count 22 national quantum computing initiatives, over 2,100 quantum computing research papers, more than 250 quantum computing startups, and over 70% of the world's major corporations forming quantum computing initiatives to make sure that they're prepared. One of the most important tools at hand for advancing the state of quantum computing today is quantum circuit simulation. Through simulation, the community validates current quantum hardware and designs the next generation, experiments with noise models and error mitigation techniques, and designs new algorithms searching for the right techniques to build the quantum accelerated applications of the future. Ultimately, simulation is how the quantum community is pushing towards and preparing for a future with quantum advantage. When we started looking at the ecosystem for places NVIDIA could provide value and push the industry forwards, it was clear there was a big gap between the simulations being performed and the performance and scale possible in quantum circuit simulation with GPU supercomputing. To address this, a little more than a year ago, we announced KuQuantum. KuQuantum is an example of a core NVIDIA strategy for accelerating the most important scientific computing workloads. We look for difficult and portland problems that are good fits for GPU acceleration and build SDKs and libraries that enable the entire ecosystem of frameworks and applications to unlock scale and performance not otherwise achievable. 
ultimately enabling the solution to problems that weren't tractable. A key piece of that strategy is partnering with industries and providing a platform to increase the success of all the players in the ecosystem. And this is a fundamental tenet of our strategy in quantum computing. We aim to provide a platform to advance the state of quantum information science while partnering with the entire quantum computing industry. Out the gate, KuQuantum was built for the community of quantum circuit simulators and frameworks as a force multiplier. It was designed in collaboration with quantum computing hardware and software companies to make sure it addressed the right use cases. And by creating the DGX Quantum Appliance, a container that integrates leading community quantum circuit simulation frameworks with KuQuantum, it provides a drop-in quantum computing simulation platform for end users on any NVIDIA GPU accelerated system. We're really excited about the results our partners are seeing by leveraging KuQuantum to accelerate their work. Now with a short talk and a big new announcement to make here shortly, I can't review all the successes we've seen, but I'd like to point out a few recent highlights. Pascal has been using KuQuantum to accelerate their work simulating the quantum algorithm called differential quantum circuits for physics machine learning workloads. DQC runs 100 times faster with KuQuantum on a single A100 GPU than on the 64 core CPU server they were using previously. And for the same latency, can simulate a circuit depth that is 24x larger than previously possible. Quantum machine learning is simultaneously one of the most exciting subfields, subfields of quantum computing and one of the most computationally challenging. Quantum machine learning models notoriously can take a very long time to train, limiting the pace of applications research. We recently partnered with Xanadu to integrate KuQuantum into Penny Lane, their framework for quantum machine learning, and AWS to make that available to customers through their Bracket service. Combining these, we saw a speed up of over 900x on simulating quantum machine learning workloads. Zapata has integrated KuQuantum into their Orchestra platform for building and deploying quantum-ready applications. Using the KuQuantum SDK, an 8-GPU system is projected to deliver more than 100x speed up over their previous results, as well as to enable the simulation of one and a half times more qubits. The list of application areas believed to be candidates for quantum advantage is large. It's so large that before we give talks, we have debates about which and how many compute domains to put on the slides. But a critical consideration as we think forwards to quantum accelerated applications is that we know these will not execute exclusively on a quantum resource, but will be hybrid applications, leveraging classical supercomputing for huge parts of the application while critical kernels are, are accelerated by a quantum resource. In fact, if we take a lesson from the 20 year effort to GPU accelerate scientific computing workloads, what we expect to see is the very same applications being used today incrementally accelerated by quantum computing as algorithms are developed and discovered and hardware matures. This observation that today's GPU accelerated scientific computing applications are the candidates for future quantum accelerated applications in drug discovery, chemistry, finance, optimization, energy, and more is more profound than it may seem at first glance, and it gives rise to some big questions for those who are looking to prepare for the quantum accelerated future. Much of the effort in quantum computing software today is focused on small-scale algorithm development. To enable this, a group of Pythonic frameworks have been developed. These are household names now in the quantum computing community. They are absolutely critical tools, and without them, we're unlikely to discover the right algorithms for quantum advantage. As I pointed out earlier, these are so critical that NVIDIA's first effort in quantum computing was to build an SDK specifically to accelerate them. However, there's a big gap between algorithmic experimentation with these frameworks and the observation on the previous slide that today's GPU accelerated scientific computing applications are the most likely candidates for future quantum accelerated applications. In order to transition from algorithm development by quantum physicists to application development by domain scientists, we need a development platform built for hybrid quantum classical computing that delivers high performance, interoperates with today's applications and programming paradigms, and is familiar and approachable to domain scientists. Of course, NVIDIA has some experience here. Back in 2006, before the launch of CUDA, there were domain scientists leveraging GPUs to accelerate their work, but very few. That's because they had to program in graphics and shader APIs, or GPU assembly, in order to gain access to the disruptive performance provided by GPU accelerated computing. From this perspective, what NVIDIA did by launching CUDA is to usher in a revolution in accessibility of a disruptive compute technology, the GPU, to the typical domain scientist.
And on that note, I'm very pleased to announce NVIDIA Quantum Optimized Device Architecture, or CODA. CODA is the platform for hybrid quantum classical computing built to address the challenges facing application developers and domain scientists looking to incorporate quantum acceleration into their applications, whether through emulated or a quantum processor. CODA is open and QPU agnostic. As you'll see shortly, we're partnering with quantum hardware companies across a broad range of qubit modalities to ensure it provides a unified platform that enables all hybrid quantum classical systems, as well as quantum algorithm companies and research institutions to ensure it addresses the needs of developers. It includes a kernel-based programming model with both single source C++ and Python implementations, as well as a compiler toolchain for hybrid systems and a stan standard library of quantum algorithmic primitives. CODA integrates with today's high-performance applications and is interoperable with leading parallel programming techniques and software. It allows a domain scientist to quickly and easily move between running all or parts of their applications on the best classical computing resources, the best simulated quantum computing resources, and the best real quantum computing resources. With CODA, NVIDIA is kicking off another revolution in developer accessibility to disruptive compute technologies allowing domain scientists to seamlessly leverage quantum acceleration tightly coupled with the best of GPU supercomputing. Over the next few slides, we'll dig in a bit on some of the features of CODA. For starters, CODA is designed to be familiar and productive for domain scientists who work on today's leading scientific computing workloads. CODA follows the CUDA annotated kernel approach but does so with typed function objects like lambdas to enable the development of algorithmic libraries that are generic with regards to input quantum kernel code. We see this here with the variational quantum eigen solver, where programmers can define parameterized quantum kernel expressions and use them as input to algorithmic libraries. In this case, CODA VQE. CODA provides a set of built-in types pertinent for quantum computing. Here we see the ability to allocate quantum memory types, and operate on them with built-in quantum operations. We also see how easy it is to construct the built-in spin-op type to define Hamiltonians for variational tasks such as this, or for other circuit synthesis approaches. The overall programming efficiency seen here for scientists to go from a parameterized ansatz and Hamiltonian to a fully running variational quantum eigen solver on a DGX platform or a physical QPU is what really stands out here. This code snippet demonstrates the underlying philosophy of the CODA programming model, to provide core concepts to describe quantum code expressions, and then promote the utility of a standard library of generic functions, enabling hybrid quantum classic, classical composability. Now that we've seen some code, let's take a look at some performance. CODA is designed from the ground up for high performance hybrid computing, whether on an emulated processor or a physical quantum processor. Here we're looking at preliminary performance results of the CODA implementation of a variational quantum eigen solver running on an A100 GPU, and then comparing it to a leading framework also running on an A100. So we have a GPU to GPU comparison here and can pull out the performance benefit of the CODA software stack. When running in an emulated environment, CODA leverages QQuantum as a backend. We see here that at 20 qubits, we're already up to a 287x speedup over the leading framework, also running on an A100 GPU. Interoperability with today's scientific computing applications and the programming models and libraries they leverage is a core design principle behind CODA. CODA in interoperates with standard language parallelism, OpenMP, OpenACC, and CUDA, allowing a domain scientist to incrementally add quantum acceleration where it makes sense to their existing applications. Here we're looking at the quantum imaginary time evolution, or KITE algorithm, which is an algorithm for computing energies in fields like material science, chemistry, and nuclear physics. This algorithm is intrinsically hybrid and iterative, with each iteration depending on a linear solve from the previous iteration. Each linear system solve depends on a tomography step that's done on the QPU. Clearly, this is an opportunity for GPU-QPU interoperability, and this code snippet demonstrates just that. Here we use CODA to compute expectation values of a set of poly spin-op instances, 
and use that as input to a KuSolver linear system solve, the results of which feed into the next iteration of the algorithm. Coda also enables exploration of hybrid quantum configurations that aren't practical in the near term. For example, we can execute a Coda program on emulated hybrid resources consisting of multiple GPUs for classical computing and multiple emulated QPUs to evaluate the benefit of multiple QPUs for scaling quantum algorithms. Coda provides core abstractions for reasoning about the underlying quantum platform and asynchronously executing tasks on available QPUs. In the example on this slide, we're simulating a hybrid hydrogen chain using a variational quantum eigensolver, and we see near-perfect strong scaling up to four simulated QPUs of 28 qubits each on a DGXA100 system. This just scratches the surface of the quantum design space that can be explored with a CODA program running on an NVIDIA accelerated supercomputer. As I noted earlier when reviewing the adoption of KuQuantum by the quantum computing community, Partnering with the ecosystem is a core tenet of our strategy in quantum computing, and CODA is no different. From the very beginning, we've been designing CODA with collaboration from leading quantum computing hardware companies, algorithm companies, and research institutions. I'm thrilled to announce that CODA will support a large and growing list of quantum processors, including those from IQM, Pascal, Quantinium, Quantum Brilliance, and Xanadu. Additionally, leading quantum software companies, QCWare and Zapata, are collaborating with us to use Coda with end users who are building the hybrid quantum classical applications of the future. And supercomputing centers are working with us to test and deploy Coda for thousands of scientific computing developers around the world, including at Ulish, NERSC, and Oak Ridge National Laboratories. Together, the DGX Quantum Appliance and Coda create a powerful platform for quantum computing research and hybrid deployment. With the DGX Quantum Appliance, researchers can develop and test new and improved quantum algorithms, accelerating the timeline to quantum advantage. With Coda, they can take today's most important application codes and seamlessly run them on the leading classical hardware, the leading simulated quantum hardware, and the leading physical quantum hardware, or any combination thereof. When integrated with our partners' QPUs, this platform will define the world's first quantum accelerated supercomputers. Quantum computing holds incredible promise for solving some of our most challenging and important problems, but still has a long way to go to realize its potential. Today, we're announcing a platform that will help us get there. By providing a programming model that is interoperable with today's most important scientific computing applications, we are opening up the programming of quantum computers to a massive new class of domain scientists and researchers. By building a software toolchain optimized for performant execution of hybrid code, we are removing bottlenecks on the path to quantum advantage. And by partnering across the entire stack from QPU builders to algorithm developers to end users, we are ensuring that we are bringing the best tools to bear to help solve these problems and enabling the entire quantum community to contribute to that effort.